Now that you've set up your Icon control surface, let's dive into the additional features on the Icon QCon Pro X and G2 Pro models. Inside your Icon control surface packaging, you should have received a digital performer overlay. Make sure to take that out and place it on your Icon device. Let's start at the top. The counter button can be used to cycle through the counter views in DP. Right now, my counter is set to measures. If I press the counter button, it changes to real time. This will reflect on the front panel of the icon device, as well as your DP project. Click once more to see frames, once more for sample readout, and once more to circle back to measures. The next cluster of buttons allows you to access important windows and commands inside Digital Performer. For example, pressing the Sequence Editor button will take you to the Sequence Editor. The same is true for the Quick Scribe, Mixing Board, and clip editor buttons. You can also access the tracks overview, MIDI editor, and clips window by holding the shift key and clicking the equivalent button. Pressing the new marker button will place a new marker wherever the wiper is currently positioned. Click here to open the Track Groups window. If I want to create a new track group, highlight the tracks you wish to group and press the New Track Group button. You can also hold the Shift key, select multiple tracks on the control surface, and press the New Track Group button. You should now see the group appear in the Track Groups window like normal. You can now adjust parameters of the group from the control surface. Hold the Track Group Suspend button to temporarily disable the track group. When I release the Track Group Suspend button, my drum group is re-enabled. The next section of buttons control channel strip layers. By default, the Pan button is selected. This is so the knobs at the top of the channel strip adjust pan. However, if I wanted to adjust the send level for a particular track, I would press the Sends button, and now my pan knobs have turned into send knobs. If I wanted to add a plugin for a track, I would tap the Plugins button. Using the knob at the top of the channel strip, I can scroll through my list of plugins and press the knob when I found the plugin I want. Press and hold the knob to open the plugin. To bypass the plugin, push the knob once, and to unbypass it, push it again. To close the plugin, press and hold the knob once more. Next, the I.O. button will bring up several menu items to choose from on the LED screen. They each have specific functions and menus that are revealed when pressing the knobs. To return to default pan mode, simply press the pan button. The row of buttons directly beneath toggle the automation type for the track. By default, DP's tracks are set to read latch. If you wish to change a track's automation type to touch, for instance, Hold down the touch button and select the track you'd wish to change. Once I press play, I can ride the fader or any other available automation type and it will record my movements. To go back to DP's normal automation mode, hold down read and select that track again. Here, you have your modifier keys and can be used to bring up other windows and functions that may have not been mentioned. To the right of those, you have a save button as well as an undo and redo button. You also have an audible mode button, which toggles audible mode on and off inside DP. Audible mode allows you to audition MIDI notes or sound bites when you click on them with your mouse. When the marker button is pressed, use the fast forward and rewind buttons to jump to the next or previous marker. Use the RTZ button to return to the beginning of the sequence. The button with the lock icon will physically lock the fader position on all tracks. 
This is great for preventing accidental fader movements. Directly to the right of the lock button is the flip button. This flips the placement of faders and encoder knobs at the top. For instance, when I press the flip button, the pan knobs control the track volume and the faders control the pan position. This is especially helpful for me when I'm writing send automation live. I click the sends button and now I can automate my send level smoothly from the fader. Press the flip button again to go back to normal. Last but not least are the channel up down buttons and the bank up down buttons. Pressing the channel up down buttons will shift the channel placement on the icon by one space. Pressing the bank up down buttons will shift the channel placement on the icon by eight spaces or one bank. This concludes the two-part video series on setting up your icon control surface inside of Digital Performer 11. I hope you found all of this information useful and enjoy your icon control surface.